Salutations everyone and welcome back to Tierno the Last Days of Europe as we are playing as Germany with a well balding man but Bratislava Bratislava Slovakia refuses the fools in Slovakia have gone against Germania's gracious offer our diplomats have returned to Germania empty-handed Slovakia intends it on defying the right uh, the here has been rallied and our men are moving south into the Carpathian mountains there's only one victory that can possibly come from us they could have made so, so much easier and we'll head straight on him and we're already engaging Slovakian troops. Bratislava. Even attacking over river, there is absolutely no way that they could have went one. Jan. Oh, Jan, what is this? No Oh, you guys are more my transport guys. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's go and do like there, because the war will be won very, very soon, anyways. Unter Lurkung. The officers of the great daddy leader were always hectic, but today was like a few others. Officers and ministers and dignitaries from across the pact entered and exited so often, our daddy leader, Bormann, had given up on ordering him to close it. Rudolph himself was swamped with checking and drafting and sending everything that the uh, big daddy required. Though he was diligent, he could no longer see his desk for paperwork. Rudolph, have you ever gotten or uh, written a declaration of war? Rudolph entered the office thinking he had misheard. Bormann was hunched over an ordnance survey with a host of OKW officers. He flung a half-written letter at Rudolph as he entered, scarcely glancing at him. I've already started it for you. Shouldn't be difficult. They won't accept the demands anyway. Rudolph opened the letter at his desk. When the Fuhrer had sat or started or said started. He was being generous. He exhaled and took out a fresh sheet of paper. More than likely, they wouldn't see it until after the invasion had started anyway. To the president of Mr. Poland. Oh, Mr. Poland, huh. You and your alleged government will immediately stand down your army and submit to the re-established general, general government. Failing to comply immediately will leave no other option than a state of war. No, 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 no. Too formal. So, we gotta get to some comments, couple comments, including one that I agree with, uh, Someone said, slow down your speech. Yes, this is why I'm slowing down my speech a little bit. That's why I stopped reading as fast. Um, just for me personally, I, I thought yesterday's video, well, some t in some portions, I spoke a little bit too quickly. And I, I naturally speak just extremely fast. Like, way too fast sometimes. Ooh, actually, yeah. Like kind of us plan. Very, very good. So, uh, you guys might have to remind me from time to time to slow down my speech, is, which is absolutely true. So, uh, yeah, we got that. Cool. And we have uh, paratroopers, or as someone said, it, this fall Shimiega translates to parachute uh, hunter trooper. So, and also keep an eye, as one of the comments said, on Italy or Italian stuff. We will a breakthrough in Cornwall. Apologies, mind you, for this urgent meeting. I regret to inform you the situation has changed, changing the way that my government must alter our proposal to reflect the situation as it is now. Our forces have successfully overwhelmed the garrison in Cornwall. It was a quick fight, one which the garrison seemed too overwhelmed and was tired to continue. We were able to rush to the lands and take the peninsula with relative ease. The English flag once again rises over the entire area formerly under dispute. We do not wish to go without recognizing your contributions towards our defense in the English Civil War. The prisoners and any recovered bodies will be extradited to your country without delay. You'll not, you will be allowed to maintain control over the city of Portsmouth, but no militarization will be permitted. All the other territories of the garrison will be placed under permanent administration by the Kingdom of England forevermore. If this deal is unsatisfactory, we are prepared to revoke our offer and settle this dispute by other means, but this offer is the best you are going to get. Otherwise, we shall revoke this olive branch and press for much harder terms. We are prepared to defend, we are prepared to defend our territorial integrity by all means necessary. Thank you for your time, Fiora. Please forward your response to the embassy. There's no need for more negotiations. We are done. Your people will be broken for this. Wait, do we get to go to war with the English? Um, Harold Macmillan, huh? Cool. So, why can't we do anything here? F Stoke the fire jingoism. Failed. Well, two out of ten. Ooh, we need liquid reserves, which we won't get. We need infantry equipment, which we could have had, and early motorized. Motorized and infantry equipment. Well, actually, we've got, we got plenty of infantry equipment. We'd have more than enough. And motorized, we've got more than enough as well. So, I guess we're sending military advisors. So, that's what we're doing right now. Next up, we have 40 uh, political power. So... People still want me to go more reformed, which I'm totally cool with. Totally okay with going more and more reformed. Uh, I, I do want to make sure that we have at least 51% control of power here. So, 161. I thought that got higher yesterday. The Hale, the Kriegsmarine, the Ordnung Polizei. Well, how about these guys? Ordnung Polizei. Let's get empower them some more because they are allied. Let's empower them because right now our control is 1071. So 106, we got that 106, and control is now at 1076, so not bad, not bad. 
and Verteidungskrieg. It hadn't taken long for the Poles to respond to the German ultimatum. When their republic was built on the corpse of the general government, evicting German settlers and vowing resistance against the Reich, what response could have there been? Bormann tossed the Polish rejection into the fireplace. Soon, the, mis the misbegotten country would go the same way as the paper blackening and curling into ash as it was consumed by flames. Very nice. Very, very good. Oh, Poland, if only you decided to learn the first time. What a shame. As it should be. Seven fronts in the Reichstag. No, we're good, my friends. We're good. And overwhelming German victory. The elephant in the room. Overwhelming victory. Wow, minus 10% stability is not very good. Uh, at least we're... Oh, actually, I reloaded the game. Now uh, we have no longer anything for South Africa. Sounds good to us. Making new from old... Ooh, less consumer goods factories, more construction speed, and less factory output for about four months? Not bad. The sheer destructive force of the Burger Creek has le left ruins littered throughout the Reich. Shattered monuments to our violence. A weak man should mourn such loss and watch silently on as the ghouls of our architectural triumphs haunt the cities forevermore. The Fuhrer is not such a man, an act of genius. He has ordered these ruins to be recycled and utilized in the Great Reconstruction. From the broken, we shall rebuild. From the small, we shall make grand. From the old, we shall make new. And debt? The question of slavery. All right. The issue of slavery is long plagued the Reich. It is undutable that the German is a master of Europe and the Slav little more than a backwards animal for the subhuman to toy at the behest of the Aryan conquerors is a natural outcome for Europe as dictated by basic biology nonetheless. We must admit that slavery's impact on the economy has not, ne not necessarily been a positive one. The disgusting filth spewed by the traitor Speer while being a total betrayal of national socialism itself may held within a small nugget of truth. The over-reliance of slaves has not helped the problem of unemployment among the lower classes and boosting employment with unprofitable... Uh, Vanity projects may simply delay our economic issues. On average, the German men and women are spending less and less as consumers, leading to some fears that the system of slavery as it stands could lead to the collapse of the German economy itself. The Reich must make a stock choice regarding the status of slavery. As many conservatives within the party are suggesting, the slave camps that were destroyed during the Burger Creek should be rebuilt, and the slaves be kicked back to work. However, perhaps a more sensible compromise would, halt, would be to halt the system of slavery and instead transfer these Mongols to isolated city ghettos. Send them to the ghettos, we get more conservative loyalty and power, loose stability. Or compromise is for cowards, the slave camps must be rebuilt. We get more loyalty from the conservatives, and reformists lose loyalty, which we don't want to do. I don't want to lose political power, I'd rather lose stability, I guess. Send them to the ghettos. Ah, uh, that's where we love to send our slave boys. Well, that sounds kind of weird. Slave boys? Hmm. Ah, welcome back. General government. Inter interim regierung government. Very good, my friends. Very, very good. It's also 1965. Hope you're having a tremendous year with all this lag, but we're doing okay ourselves. We have up to six. I would like to get up to four. Two to three. Fifty percent chance to get two to three. Let's do give hungry arms. Model colony. Once the model colony of the Reich, the traders of Ostfront shattered the Reich's commissariat at the outbreak of the Burger Creek. Yep. Yet, yet, yet. With that dreadful conflict over, the Reich was, must once more assert itself over over its rightful Lebensraum. Whoever now governs the region will now dutifully swear allegiance to the Fuhrer or find himself utterly annihilated. Ostland is rightfully the Reichs. The fall of Warsaw. Uh, Wolschik Omnia lay beneath the rubble, dreaming of oblivion. He drifted across a reality where it all ended, where his brethren would never speak Polish, would never fear to speak Polish, and where Warsaza would reside beneath a peaceful horizon, never starless, and the shrouded horrors of the past long forgotten. A world robbed from his own sacrifice for him to join a doomed uprising that would ensure Nazism to be lost in echoes and for his children to be disintegrated into the ashes of destiny and time. He awakened from the call of his son, scarcely a decade old, holding his morbidly wounded arm. The child begged for him to find the strength to lift himself up from the debris to join his wife who survived the mortar strike. The father struggled to turn his head to see the devastation. He saw his comrades from the underground all around him, their bodies gray and stale. From the, his numbness, he knew he would soon join them to the end. He extended his arm, pulled his son close, and told his dying breath to walk towards the sunrise until they reached the mythical new homeland, a place where they would never be lost again. The child's grip did not falter. The pain of loss too providential in his hands. The, boys pray, the boy prayed to God to deliver them from evil for a world where they never have to suffer. As the son begged for the Lord's mercy, he remembered the vision his, he saw, and decided that nothing could have ever made him give up his only son. Weakly, he muttered his last words, If I were God, Jacob, I'd make the world just so and no difference, so I would have you. I'd have you. His voice shifted away from the world with the soul. The child held his cold, motionless hand until the smoke cleared and the toiling of St. Florian's bells rang across the ruins. Jacob Omlia reached into his father's uniform, unpinned the emblem of the Kotvitka from his leather jacket and placed it in his pocket before he turned it around away from the sunset and began to make his way along the long road home. Never lost. Ooh, minus one manpower. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, that is not nice. Ooh. And I don't want to siphon funds from these guys. The strength is going down so fast. There's not really like anything we can do, so. Alright, you know what? As much as I want to take out Burgundy, 
I got big plans for Osland. Huge plans, mammoth plans. The best plans. Absolute overwhelming strikes into Osland. Uh, if you like to read about this, go right ahead. I'm not really interested in reading about this thing. That's fine. There we go. And there we go. Cool. All right. Up next, what do we have? Nine. Oh, we are at nine. They might get up to ten. Oh, and if we... Actually, what happens if we tie here? What happens? Help motorize the army. Well, that's not very good for us. Adaptive command. Oh, provide training. Monthly decay of Cabal will decrease by one. That's fine. Let's go do that. Sources funding. Monthly decay of Cabal strength will decrease by one. Ah, we're all kind of okay for now. The model colonies? Well, since we're here, I do want to do this anyway. Let's give it a few more days and then we'll do that. Mission type tactics? Yes, please. <clears throat> I mean, we could do some more influence stuff with the Reichstadt and stuff, but let's wait. Honor the war. Conservatives get more loyalty. Armored professionalism and society development will begin to improve. More population, too. I like that. Academic investments, but academic base rapidly starts improving. Ooh, honestly, if we get into any major conflict, we should have enough manpower, right? We realistically should have enough manpower for the foreseeable future. We shouldn't have any problems. If we do this, do we get any more population here? Do we get more attack and defense, which is really good. Mm, conservatives, conservatives. Over here, we're all German, more recruitable population factor. I kind of want to go with... Uh, how's the academic base looking? Academic base? It's slowly going down. Army of professionalism will go up anyways. Intelligentsia. Actually, Intelligentsia or... The here is doesn't matter. Um, intelligentsia, though. We don't want to empower the Intelligentsia, right? Because they're not... Yeah, they're they're op opposed to us. So we so basically, in my mind, we've got to go down with the army one then. Honor the war. Despite the destruction that it brought, the Burger Creek must never slip from our collective consciousness. We will pump safe finances into the building of monuments and statues dedicated to the fierce triumph so that the loyal National Socialist comrades who sacrificed their lives for the German Reich may be immortalized forever in marble and stone. Forever, evermore. All right, now. Oh, they're at eight. Ooh, that's pretty tight. New options are on the, available on the focus sheet. Oops, my bad. I hit my desk a little bit. More strength for the Cabal. Over here, increase the strength of the Cabal. Why not? Fun the Cabal. Whatever. Strength of the Cabal will decrease. Siphon funds? No, no. In implicated political enemies? Ooh, we get more political power. Decrease the strength. I don't want to decrease the strength, though. That does not seem very bueno. All right, let's come back over here. 1076. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Kriegsmarine. Let's empower you a little bit more. Nice. So 1076 should be 1081. Very good. To the best. My fear in conclusion, I am glad to report that the state of interim regierung is stabilizing further. The overall region is rectified enough that our efforts can be consolidated under one acting director again. Borman reclined in his chair slightly, focusing on the conversation occurring through the telephone. The fear had long known where the discussion was going of that of a new Reichskommissar for the general government. In advance, he had considered many capable officials whom he knew he could trust, yet none of the candidates were so superior to one another that the choice was obvious. Still, if there's one thing that the Fuhrer knew above all else, that is that politics has a way of making a decision for you. Of all options, there would be three men Borman considered. First was Edward Wagner, the man responsible for the Reich's logistics during the Second World War, and a notable militarist. The GGN is vital to the Reich's logistically, and according, Wagner will excel in such a position, though he will have to step down from his military rank to receive it. Second is Theodor Koch, the industrialist of the Reichswehr Home and Goring Company. The GGN has untapped industrial potential, and a savvy man like Koch will handle the aforementioned logistics well. Finally, Werner Dollinger, a reformist and famous Bavarian economist, would perform admir admirably in reconstructing the economic prospects of the GGN itself. Bormann brought the phone to his lips, or his lips, paused, and came to a decision. The militarists? Ooh, we, as much as I'd like to do that one, seems okay. Koch, the industrialist. I like, I like the industrialist. Oh, Dolinga. Ooh, reformist loyalty. Ooh, yeah. I think I gotta go with that one. Mixed economy. Actually, that's pretty good. I like that one. Very, very good. How are we looking here? 50%? Is that all we can have for strength? It's just 50%. So we're looking at 442, 1081, and 6611. I mean, the conservatives, even though we're trying to get a little more reformist in here, we're really pulling towards the conservative side. We have over 50% of total power for the conservatives, which is kind of wowzes. Honor the war, my friends. Oh, we must honor the war. Implicate people. Now we good. One, two. We do that. Oh, oh, we did it. We got it. 
We got early. They went up to 11. Now that's nice. Oh, stability and awesome. Our contemporaries in Austin have found themselves triumphing over the proverbial forces of darkness in the Onbuga Creek. Legitimized by two astounding military victories, it is clear to many in the gross Germanicus Reich that National Socialist Conservatism must find itself retained under any circumstance, even with the hawks of the hair. Coming to admit they failed in their attempts to ferment jingoism. Thus, for once, stability reigns in the Ost Front. Good, and then we'll do a military redeployment. The Pharaoh stole a victory in the Book of Cream. Harold's great change for the German people, but he cannot keep the flame of National Socialism alight without obedience to his new regime. The Reich is not yet fully pacified, and dissent still runs rampant throughout major cities and small towns alike. Student militias continue to train in the basements, while radical militias scheme in abandoned warehouses. Acts of terrorism are being committed every single day. We must redeploy the military and fully pacify our splintered nation. Can anyone say Hungary isn't our natural ally? Welcome back to the fold, Hungary. We need Romania next. We're doing really well with our getting our guys back, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Next up, ooh, cover up Cabal efforts, increase the strength. Oh, I don't want to do that, but yes, we will. And after this one, what should we do next? More stuff in Oslo. Our friend Stahlecker. Thankfully, Fuhrer Bormann's dear friend Franz Walter Stahlecker reigned supreme as Reichskommissar of Reichskommissar at Oslin. As a result of his victory, Oslin Bürgerkrieg, the gross Germanische Reich can rest easy as a foremost regional ally currently governs the so-called model colony. As the Oslin issue will likely be resolved through diplomacy, we shall redirect our men elsewhere and wait a diplomatic response and decision. Actually, after this one, we gotta grab some of this, right? No, that's 1970. Oh, we'll come over here then and build... Nothing else. Okay. Industrial hor Horizontal Industrial Organization 2. Spy. Alright, so we're still here. 1081. Hey, 51%. Nice. Awesome. 51% is good with us. Conservatives, reformists, reformists. Well, I would like to increase reformists. Oh, reformists are here. That's top dog. Reformists are pretty close. Actually, how about we go here? Reformists, more loyalty. There you go. 36%. Not bad. 600 power. Hey, the militaries are 446. Not too bad. They're second power. Conservatives have 51% support, but, you know, whatever. What can we do here? Siphon funds? No, thank you. Military redeployment? Our friend Stalaka. Thank you, Stalaka. And after that, we should go ahead and probably read. Uh, smoke them out, maybe? Yeah. Mm. So, we'll get... I really want that extra monthly professionalism change. Who over here? Division organization. Vermont redeployment. A merciful redeployment. Burger Creek memorials are good. Material repurposing, austerity, Polish humiliation. Yeah. Redeployment. We got less organization, more planning speed, which is kind of a waste. Shell shocked Wehrmacht. I gotta get rid of shell shocked Wehrmacht. Um, must have all Wehrmacht. Not bad. Really not bad at all. Banned from military service, from military assistance. Okay. Shell shock Wehrmacht will be reduced. Will be reduced. Yeah, I gotta get. I, I gotta smoke them out. Is there any trait more benefiting of weak men than forgiveness? To oppose a rightful fear of Martin Barman was, a, was to oppose the Reich itself, which many of our enemies sought to accomplish by rallying behind perverse denominations of national socialism. Those in the Wehrmacht who betrayed their own blood in favor of degeneracy deserve to be punished, however this, the Fuhrer sees fit. I would like reintegration. We're all Germans here, but some are more Germans than others. I just... monthly professionalism. I, I just gotta do it, you know? The Rifle Rex Commissar. With his usual dedicated rigor, Rex Minister Werman Naumann has been organizing the Ministry of Propaganda and Public Enlightenment to produce positive coverage of Franz Walter Stahlecke, the new leader of the Rex Commissar at awesome. Whether they be in the daily newspapers, the evening radio broadcasts, or the televised news program, stories of Stahlecke's rise from industrious minister to Rex Commissar are sweeping the nation. Naumann's orders to contact or contrast Stahlecke's many achievements with the incompetency, avarice, and brutality of his vanquished opponents that succeeded in presenting him as the only legitimate successor to Henrik Lohse. Particular emphasis has been placed on the close personal relationship between the Führer and the Reichskommissar, who have often met to discuss awesome policy and exchange bureaucratic advice, Schallacher. While subservient to the Führer shares much in common with him, both men have secured their duties with impeccable devotion, both men are loyally attached to the conservative wing of the NSDAP, and both men have triumphed over their respective rebels. Think of the, the press as a great keyboard in which the government can play. Oh, very good. Oh, political power, don't mind if we do, in which we are going to go ahead. And we could dismantle them. Reform, reform. Reform, 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 reform. Oh, boy. Well, we probably want to lower the power of these guys over here. Faction loyalty, 40, 90, 40. I would like some more reformists. So, right now, the reformist is 600, which is not bad. Is anyone... Is, are any reformists close to conservatives? Ah, uh, over here they are. No, 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 that's 27, not 47. Uh, hover over here. Immutable? Reformists? Increase the power of the people? No. 
Add two reformists. So now it's a little bit more balanced. 604. We do have enough political power. We can do that again, perhaps. There we go. 608. As you can take so much time to do that. And I do additionally want to make sure that we continue to empower ourselves with the church, maybe. The hair. You know, all good stuff. 161. Actually, we could probably just lower the support here. Um, we can empower... Oh, we can't empower that because it's... Well, we don't have power. Let's see. 121, 122. Intelligence. Yep. Siemens. Eh, we'll do that. No, actually... Oh. oh, we have zero. We have no more. We can't do that. My bad. My bad. We'll just keep sucking up that political power. I love political power. Uh, anything else around here? Not really. The Ukrainian problem. All right, cool. Smoke them out. And then convene the parties. Well, Stahl, Lecker support almost guaranteed. It's about time we convene the parties of either nation for a grimly friendly chat on the matter of the GGR and the Reichskommissar Dossland's future relations. It's best we get everyone on board with such a meeting as soon as humanly possible, for we cannot and mustn't allow for this issue to fester and be continuously delayed by our bureaucracy. Let's see. People keep... From the comments from the last video, people keep recommending to keep going with some reforms. Slow down your speech. Onega has a focus tree. Finland, I think we discovered, did not, but Onega does, and I think can reunify this part of that part of Russia, and watch influence in Hungary. Well, we already have, so there we go, my friends. All right, what can we do here? Oh yes, strength of a cabal. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Can we do this again? Yes, we can. All right, Siemens, loyalty, power. Good. The banks. Oh, we definitely got to do with these guys. There we go. 156. Better. Loyalty to the reformists, eh? One. Oh, actually, reformist power went down. Oh, because they were leading in the banks area. Yeah, conservatives still doing pretty darn well, I'd say. Um, what if we did that? They didn't really change much at all. Since militaries have too much support there, but the great Romanian game, the domestic situation in Romania is heating up. More or less isolated from any of the great powers of the world since the end of the Second World War, Romania has kept itself clear from German and Italian influences for over two decades. Though the great market crash did hurt the Romanian economy, the government used the situation to their advantage and managed to claw back all of their lost possessions from Hungary. King Mihai I even managed to claw his way into the top echelon of government where he promptly banned the fanatical Iron Guard from participating in government. Although this move gave him de facto political control over the country, the reality of the situation is that Romania is a deeply divided state. A plethora of far-right groups operating in secrecy, biding their time and growing the roots as rogue Iron Guard partisans terrorize the countryside and any non-Romanians. The situation has recently worsened as another surge of terrorist activity rocks, rocks the nation. This time, however, the chaos has caught the attention of both Italy and Germany, who both sense that perhaps now is the time to expand their influence to, to the neutral country. For once, it is perhaps the Italians who have the advantage. King Mihai and his immediate cabinet, while cordial to the Reich, refuses to deepen ties with a regime that is so akin to the Iron Guard. Italian investors and military missions will likely see a lot of success in the coming days. That isn't to say that Germans have nothing to work with, however. Rumors are starting to circulate that the Nazis are supporting the Iron Guard and other far-right underground parties in the state. For better or for worse, G Romania is now the next unwilling participant in the great game. Both sides are m moving their pieces for a new game, and now for the news. Good evening. The Fuhrer will always, all smiles today as he safely arrived in Austin and met with Franz Walter Stalaka, the rightful appointed Reichskommissar and Crusher of the insurgents, in their insur insurrection. Salutes and handshakes were exchanged as two old friends reminisce about the past and committed themselves to a bright future. Joining Stalaka in front of the cameras were two representatives of his foreign ministry, Minister Hans Kramer and his State Secretary Reinhard Schmidt. After a few minutes of pleasantries, the four men moved behind closed doors to initiate a five hour meeting with the rest of Stalaka's cabinet in which the future direction of Austin policy was discussed. The future of Austin looks brighter evermore. The final meeting. Whilst Rex Commissariat's Austin's government is loyal to Fuhr Martin Bormann's gross Germanisch Reich, much of its former representatives arguably are not. Although our previous meetings have been largely cordial as both respective governments are in agreement, this might prove slightly different indeed. Given the controversy of this matter, we must hold one final meeting to decide the fate of many thousands of apparently dissenting figures. Huh. Alright, Romania, here we go. We start with eight. Well, wow, that sucks. Two, it's a fifty percent chance we do well. There's a sixty six percent chance here that we can get what we need. 50% versus 66. Well, we gotta go with 66, right? We're probably not gonna win this turn. Alright, so we've established that. Next focus, let's go and do some um, more Jimin than others. We all share Jimin blood, but the manifestation of one Aryan's nature arises differently depending on the strength of this blood. Those who fought for Bormann and therefore National Socialism approved their absolute purity, while those who opposed him displayed a suspiciously subhuman mindset. Traitors should not, therefore, be considered wholly German. Strinkeheim Oslin. The following persons have been investigated at the behest of the Führer. Karl E. Tausche. 
Minister of Labour for Rex Commissary Austin, a former friend and ally of Maya Landrut until 1961. Proclaim loyalty to Stalag at the beginning of the Austin Civil War. Obtain letters, see page 44. Real sympathy for Sperian S. current economic reform alongside criticism of Stalag's competency. Reinhard Schmidt, the State Secretary of Foreign Affairs for Rex Commissary Austin, proclaim loyalty to Stalag at the beginning of the Austin Civil War. Obtain diary entries, see page 49. Reveal a reputation of Stalag's sanguine attitude towards other Re Eastern Rex Commissaries and several insulting remarks regarding the Fuhrer's height and a lack of hair. Oh, no, no, no. You do not talk about our daddy bald man's hair. Norman Wasserhaus, Deputy Minister of the Interior for Rex Commissariat Austin, defected from Dreschler to Stahlecker during the Austin Civil War. Secret audio recording, see brothel tape number four, reveals sympathy for Hermann Goring in the military swing of the NSDAP. Bowman thumped through the Orpal documents with a scowl, clutched in his right hand with a ballpoint pen, poised above the paper like a mantis ready to strike its prey. The hours passed by as a fear jabbed with, towards names with a sneer, circling in bright red Reading. Before the night was over, his judgments would be finalized. Time for a cabinet reshuffle. A united Austin. Ooh. Wipe the slate clean. What's your name in Lauma? Huh. Uh, redo this? Hmm. Purge the filth. Do we purge the filth? Or do we have a united Austin? Hmm. Who cares about Pakistan right now? They're doing whatever. Hmm. Don't rock the proverbial boat. This sounds like a very, very conservative option to do. Why this like clean? That sounds like it's either you can get military stuff because you're reforming and literally taking people out. So, or technically by taking people out, you are reforming things a little bit more. Like, so wipe this slate clean. A united Austin. You do get more conservative loyalty, which <sighs> banks and the Reichswehr. So the banks don't like us and the Reichswehr don't like us either. That could really help us here. So, oh, you know what, let's, we can get more conservative support later on. Well, it appears that we've decided on our approach to Rex Commissar Olsen's pur pur purposely dissident, dissident government officials, that being the radical option. Thereby, Austin must be purged of the filth that had infected the state prior to the outbreak of the Burger Creek. Indeed, we cannot hope to rehabilitate rehabilitate the criminals who helped to undermine previous uh, government efforts. Therefore, it is required that we wipe the slate clean of these individuals. Well, this is probably the wrong option to do, but we'll do it anyways, just because I think that we might get some more support, maybe, maybe not. I hope we do. I just want more reform support, because we can get more, like I said, conservative support. That's not too much of an issue for us, probably. Oh, uh, what's going on here? We're at nine. Oh my goodness, we're at nine. Yeah, there's no way we can get higher. Hopefully they get up to, stay at eight, don't go to ten, and go anything above ten. Hopefully, ooh. Implicate our political enemies? No. No. Sure, why not? We'll do that one. Wipe the slate clean, my friends. So we are at 50%. Unternehmen Laumum. The rising sun did little to warm Karl E. Tauscher as he strode towards his car in the chilly morning air, face pointed down towards the protection from the bitter wind. His stomach rumbled with an animalistic groan, begging Tauscher for the breakfast he had to skip. Why had Stahlecker called this meeting in such a short notice? He blew on his clammy hands and rubbed them together with vigor. As usual, Heidi had hidden his gloves in the evening before. It had become the morning routine for Tauscher to humor his daughter's silly little games and hunt down for gloves, but unsurprisingly, she was still tucked into bed and there was no time to go rummaging. Which genius had decided to organize this meeting for 5 a.m.? Hal Tauscher came out ready, reedy voice, suddenly pulling him out of his thoughts. A stranger stood before him, a dark trench coat billowing in the wind. The gentleman's nose was tinged red from the cold wind, and a polite smile was stretched widely across his face. Tauscher was just about to respond when a blinding pain exploded across the back of his head, and a darkness developed. Him. Flashes of light, shots of anger, screams of mercy. Tauscher felt as though he was floating across the floor. He heard a voice he recognized screaming about a diary. Reinhard Schmidt, a gunshot rang out. There was silence. Tauscher suddenly jolted forward and landed on the cold, hard floor. White hot agony. He started staggered to his feet, the stony walls closing in on behind him. He turned around to the uniformed man, blocking the doorway of the cell, and dropped down to his knees in prayer for the first time in decades. Two shots rang out, echoing throughout the corridor for all to hear. Orpo officers heard it as they played card games next to the cells. Uh, deputies heard it as they whispered their final thoughts. Ministers heard it as they hastily tied their Shoelace nooses, hoping they hoping against hopping against hope, hoping against hope that the torturers would not return within twenty four hours. There was no one left in the building to hear anything. The briefing arrived on Borman's desk. He allowed himself a rare smile of satisfaction and pulled out an African cigar. Austin was finally secure. If you want something done right, you do it yourself. Well, that really sucks. So we lost performance and conservative support. Well, this, uh, uh, why, why, why you do this to me? Uh, that's all right. We got some political power. We can go ahead and do this. Lower this some more. I don't want to, the banks need to go down. Intelligentsia. Well, that's not bad for reformers, actually. That's pretty good. Mm. Let's lower military loyalty there. 
Actually, well, just, just increase these guys. Increase the loyalty of the half. The former's... That'd be good. Cool. 50%. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm just messing this all up. It seems like it's almost impossible to get reformers because it's so low. Freedom of Freedom in Reich. The deployment of a great military and our actions taken towards its disloyal elements have proven to be successful. Now that it has outlived its temporary role as a provisional police force, the Wehrmacht will once more serve as the army of the Reich stronger than ever before. With the revival of our enemy or army comes the revival of the Reich itself and a reputation across the entire world. Very, very good. Alright, so we're still at 9 and 8. That's pretty good. Down here, we can't do anything. That's fine. Close this. How do we do this? Chief of the OKW. Okay, so we just gotta keep going down our path here then. 8 days. That's fine. We can just go and read the next one anyway. The little ride goes on. Throughout revitalization, and reconstruction, and redeployment, Bormann has made significant progress in forcefully shoving the fractures of the Reich together into a unified whole and strengthening his grasp on powers and process. The ride, however, is far from over. The Fuhrer is setting his sights on one of the most crucial issues plaguing the nation. The influence of Spado and Shona on the future direction of the Wehrmacht's political alignment. Good. Good. Uh, that's a, We're pretty much at the tippy top that we can do there. Nothing really for here. Support companies. It's still 1965. Maybe get some better artillery. Yes, please. Maybe some land auction as well. Yes. We can't do that one, but we can do military uh, deception. Frieden in Reich. Oh, nine. Yeah, there's no point to do this anymore. Since that would just ruin us anyway, so. Alright, alright. Freedom in the like. Freedom in the like. Oh, 62. 263. Um. Yeah, I think I'm just screwing this all up. The ride goes on, my friends. The ride goes on. Good, good, good. And the next one we can choose. Oh, at least we're still 50% 50, 50 power, which is nice. Reformists, reformists, reformists. Even more reformists at this point for everywhere. Well, since we're doing this anyways, more reformists. Looking a little better. After the ride goes on. Ooh. Oh, we're at one. Do we... We won! Cool. They're at eight. Holy cow. Command power? Let's see. I, I like to do the big numbers first. One to six. Ooh. Gonna do that one. All right. More cabal strength. More Cabal Strength. More Cabal Strength. Infinite Cabal Strength. The ride goes on in which, when in Germania, Martin Bormann is a political genius. The Fuhrer's intuitive embrace of Machiavellian political and moral philosophies allowed him to become the greatest political mind of his generation. At least that's what the newspaper we produce say. Indeed, being the political luminary he is, Bormann has set his sights on tackling the current most dangerous conflict in Germany. For the gross Germanischers right to achieve superpower status once more, the Wehrmacht's ideological divide must be solved and the opposing faction made to quiet down and actually follow our orders for a change. We face a choice. Spadel's reformism or Schoner's militarism. Both with significant levels of support in the senior of Elmark. To solve this, we shall arrange a meeting and decide once and for all, based on the immortal Führer principle, what the Führer decides shall be carried out, and that will be the end of the matter. As they say, when in Germania, do as a Führer, Führer do. Good, good, good. And did it not go? Come on. Alright. So we're... Wow, we got one. We started with one, now we're two. We got up to six. We're supposed to get up to six. Well, alright, let's go with that one next. Oh, wait, they're in our... Oh, so... Oh, Terrible fate. Here are your notes, my fear. Get a hard clap of hands it, handing Bowman the wad of paper. Bowman snatched them away and wiped the sweat from his forehead. Your speech will be excellent as usual. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, your speech will be excellent as usual. Stop fawning, Bowman snapped. He tried to slow his breath. The entirety of the Reich stag away to his words. I can give a speech to save my life. One more thing, mein Führer. Klopp continued hesitantly. We received a report from Heinrich Müller and the Ordnung Polizei. Joseph or Josef Terboven had been located in an arrest. What are your orders? Bormann tore his eyes from the speech and curled his lip. Terboven, that little rat. The man had dismantled Reich's commissariat in Norwegian and sent the garrison flee fleeing back to the Reich. Terboven and most of the garrison had fought on the side of the Bormann. It was true, but the rest had split to aid other contenders. We betrayed the Reich, hang the dude. He came to my aid. He will be stripped of his titles, but pardoned. Hmm. Well, it seems more military, so let's go do it. He came to my aid. Maybe that's a reform thing to do, you know? Okay, so I don't understand this. Oh, oh, I like control percentage. That's not good. So we are the conservative wing, I guess. We go. I guess we'll just go as reformist as possible then, right? Reform? Oh, militaries have a lot over here. Ooh. Reform is leading. You know what? I'm going to set my sights on reformists throughout all the opposition for now. Opposition, you're already over here. These guys, 
Ooh, that's not bad. So these guys are reformists. Lots more reformists. Lots, lots, lots more. When in German, yeah, of course. Meeting in Reichs Kanzlei to issue the settle the settle the issue of political ins political stability in the Reich with their eyes on mere grandstanding would be a deeply foolish measure. Too many lies hidden behind these meaningless displays. Too little can be ascertained ascertained from the shows of force and plays that relevance or relevance. To truly ascertain the values and truth of a man, you need to only put him in a battle for his very existence. The reformists and militarists, Spado and Shona, Devil's Age, but which will prove most capable, which will prove most valuable to the Fuhrer. Let us receive both of the Reichskanzlei and throughout the, this forum see for ourselves which shall come out on top. Our most dangerous issue. The Burger Creek gripped the fatherland apart limb from limb, and despite the fierce selfless efforts to stitch the fractured remnants of the Reich back together, there are many some wounds that still fester. If they're not treated soon, the body of the Reich will atrophy and we may collapse into chaos, of course, once again. The men of the Wehrmacht have sworn their oaths of loyalty towards the new fear, but not all sought to align themselves fully behind his wisdom. A faction of military reformists has coalesced around Hans Speidel, advocating for the total reinvigoration of the Wehrmacht, including a complete overhaul of military strategies and a professional reduced draft. On the other end of the spectrum, Ferdinand Schoen has rallied his band of militarists, stable riders, to desire an increased draft and political role for the Wehrmacht. While Bowman would sooner rather trust a Swiss banker than these uniformed weasels, the Reich's wounds can only be healed with the support of one of these two influential factions. The clock is counting down, and the time draws near for the Fuhrer to grit his teeth and do a deal with a devil, but which devil shall we do a deal with? I like the population we have now. Over 700,000, very good. Uh, we're at four. Oh, and we are still in the same battle. Oh, oh we're going to lose this one. We're absolutely going to lose this one, because we we got one out of six. That's like a, what, 20% chance to get? Less than 20% chance to get one. And we got one. So we'll lose this one, whatever, because we can't spend money. We need more army XP, so, you know, whatever. It is what it is. National Protection Alliance. Someone did recommend that we should play that sometime. As NPA in China. Uh, reformists. Oh, we have no more interactions. It's fine. Meeting with the Valmox leaders, Martin Bowman rubbed his eyes with a deep sigh. The days seemed to stretch out longer as the weeks went by. There were moments, moments fleeting, insignificant. When he imagined himself retiring to bed early in the evening, released to the crushing burden of preserving the Reich, he stared at the moonlight streaming in through the window, pulling across the floor towards his large oaken desk. When was the last time he appreciated something as simple as a ray of moonshine? Heil Bowman! The sleepy voice snapped him out of his ridiculous thoughts. Heil Bowman, Bowman replied, gruffly down the phone. Hey, Spadel, you are invited to a private meeting in the Reich's Kanzlei. I am willing to appoint a new chief of the OKW, of upper of case is presented to me. Ferdinand has already agreed to join us. Reluctantly, Borman thought. Shona's voice, at first so smug and satisfied at the invitation, began to radiate fury the moment Spado's name was mentioned. I understand my fear. Spado's fatigued, mildly confused voice came after a brief pause. Hi, Borman. Bowman, of course, pushed the phone down with a grunt, and once more his eyes drifted to the luminescent puddle transforming the ugly pattern of the rung into something surprisingly beautiful. Bowman pushed himself out of the chair, crossed the room, and flicked the light switch on. The moonlight vanished in an instant. He returned to his desk, picked up his pen, and began to scribble. There was no time for such childish distractions. Bowman had work to do. The meeting awaits. Anything else? Yes. Cover up Cabal? Yes. Oh boy. Rutter des Reichs. Meeting in the Rex Kanzlei. Well, uh, sorry about that, but I did want to check the comments again, and someone did recommend that we span more conservative points, but we'll see what happens. The future direction of the country, though. Enter Bowman Bacht, his gaze firmly fixed on the portrait of himself hanging on the wall. He heard the door open behind him, followed by two overlapping cries of Heil mein Führer. Bowman turned around and towards the two uniformed soldiers and officers of his speckled snakes in the skin of lions. Let's avoid the pleasantry, gentlemen. Bowman said gruffly, sit down. We cannot delay this discussion any further. The fatherland deserves a strong and stable army to defend its people and preserve its lands as your fear. It is my duty to listen to your arguments. Bowman sat down in his chair and crossed his arms. Convince me. You have my gratitude for allowing us this opportunity, my fear. Schwader spoke up, taking a seat at the table. Only by reinvigorating and adapting the Wehrmacht to modern times can we help launch Germany into a new era of progress. We cannot allow the quagmire of the past to bog down our soldiers in the present. We must explore new tactics and new strategies. We need a total review of the Wehrmacht. May any competent and respected men who desire a true reform have attached themselves to my ideals. As they did to Speer's Shona Schneer. My Führer, is our army not the greatest in the world? Do we not crush the Allies in the Soviet Union? We have the greatest minds behind the greatest strategies, commanding the bravest and most notable of men in the world. Shona thrust a finger towards Speidel. This man and his clique of cowards would strip the Wehrmacht down to nothing in the name of reform. Speidel, uh, Bowman, I mean, sighed heavily as these two officers continued the arguing. This was going to be a long meeting. Spider is right. We need a total overview of the Wehrmacht. Ooh. We get a bunch of land auction, or Shona's logic is untouchable. Our Wehrmacht is already great. 
So, Spidal, you get more Reformist loyalty. Or, Ungehoya in uniform, more Reformist loyalty. Well, the way we probably want to go, Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer, uh, we'll probably have to go with Spidal. Spidal is daddy right. On Spider performance during his meeting with Bowman has cemented him as the obvious choice for the chief of the OKW, and his intelligent arguments prove that the future of the Wehrmacht is in safe hands. With the Führer's blessing, Spider may begin his reforms without restraint, meaning in the Rex conscription. Let's move on to your next topic, Bowman said, lighting up his cigar conscription. Where do you stand? As I believe, or I have already stated, my Führer, Shona asked and said, pushing his spectacles up to his shot nose, our army's strategies have proven to be successful. However, an army is nothing without its personnel. The Reich is beset on all sides by threats, from the Jewish capitalists in Washington to the yellow powder mongers of the Orient. What if they try to invade us? We cannot allow the fruits of our labor to be snitched, snatched away as our feeble Wehrmacht watches on. Sure enough, jab to finger on the table, we need more conscripts. A bloated army is just as effective as a bloated soldier, Spider waved his hand dismissively. It'll collapse under its own weight, a reduced draft will tighten our military. And then we will consensibly set about professionalizing the Wehrmacht. We're professional commanders and professional soldiers, not incompetent yes-men and leading scared young cannon fodder. Our priorities should be quality, not quantity. It it's necessary therefore, the, the new draft be voluntary. Voluntary? Shona exploded into laughter and slapped the table heartily. Forgive me, my fear, but this man is suggesting that we take the honor and glory of battle away from the young men of the Reich. Wars would turn us into heroes. Spider would deprive the right of our citizens to fight alongside each other in the favor of what? A smaller cluster of so-called professionals? Bowman drummed his fingers across the table, brow furrowed in thought. Spider speaks the truth. And we want Spider, so... Yeah, we want Spider, daddy. Yeah... We must prioritize the quality of our army over its quantities, or else Shona understands the military, a larger army is a mightier army. Well, no draft exemptions with educational deferment. We get quite a bit less recruitable population factor, get more war sport, research speed, and better academic base change. I like that one. I like to improve society. Uh, the role of the Wehrmacht. Bowman rubbed his temples as the two men gestured and shouted to have been Adolf Hitler in the glory days, surrounded by adulating columns of generals who hung onto his every pearl of wisdom. Watching these uniformed serpents argue who could hiss the loudest and bite the hardest made Bowman's stomach turn. Enough! Bowman snapped, smashing his third cigar into the ashtray. It is time for us to address our final topic. What political position should the Wehrmacht have in our greater Reich? It is my belief that the military should be an apolitical force within the fatherland, Spado stated. It is the duty of the Wehrmacht to serve the nation and its people, not to lobby the government and certainly not to pursue political agendas. If the military considers itself to be equal to the party, then how long does it, until it decides to become the party itself? You are spousing or spouting lies as usual, Shona Spat. You who would see the Wehrmacht treated as a mere tool, not an instrumental force within our nation. If the party is ahead of the Reich, the Wehrmacht is its mighty fist. Together, we work together in tangent to crush our enemies, but separately we all bleed out. The military should absolutely be political, and a true standard bearer of national social thought. An apolitical Wehrmacht would become a disloyal Wehrmacht. Spider is right, the Wehrmacht should serve as an apolitical force. More leader experience gained by a lot. Kill them all with military policing, more war support. But less division attack by quite a bit. Or, Sean is right, a political Wehrmacht is one of the a cause. We'll get political power, Spado's right. Next up, with the results. Silence! Bowman raised his hand firmly as the two officers ceased their bickering. I have made my decision, Herr Spado, you are correct. It is time for a true reform within the Wehrmacht to take place. Effective immediately, you will take the position of chief of the OKW. Spado allowed himself a satisfied smile and nodded slightly as Shona's eyes widened in fury and his hands balled into fists. Thank you, mine, Fiala, Spado said, for reaching your open hand to reach out. To those in the Wehrmacht who desire positive change, you have my full support. This is outrageous, Shona roared, shooting spit spittle across the table. He leapt up and slammed his fist against the wooden surface. He pointed accusingly at Bowman, drilling into him with burning eyes. You have just let a traitor into your bed, a secret acolyte of Albert Schwer himself. How dare you, Bowman shot to his feet, grabbing his ashtray and launching it towards the raging officer. Shona ducked just in time to avoid the projectile. Remember who you're speaking to, Ferdinand. I know exactly who I'm speaking to, Shona stiffly brushed cigar off his uniform. The sneer stretched across his face was all but treasonous. Heil Bowman, with that he marched out of the room. Spider quickly replaced his shocked face with a grateful one as he strolled over to Bowman with his arms outstretched. The Fuhrer replied with a firm handshake and a forced smile. A deal with the devil. Followed with review the Wehrmacht. To initiate his thorough reformation of the Reich's military forces, Hans Spider has ordered an official review of the Wehrmacht. From its funding and organization to its chain of command and political leanings. Once he has obtained a complete picture, the failed, failed marshal will put on with his radical changes. Push on with them. Let's push on, push on. Ah, uh, the Ukrainian problem. Yeah, we lost this one. That sucks. Yeah, I don't see the next one. And... Okay, so it's a little weird. Okay, so the Ukrainian problem. Unfortunately, the breadbasket of the Reich has not been spared the chaos of the Civil War. We need to assess the situation at Reichskommissar Ukraine and deal with whatever and whoever is in charge there. 
All right, four and three. That's not bad. Uh, is there anything for six? One, three, three, four. I'm going to do this one just because Rally the Right seems like a pretty good idea. And the Republic of Ukraine, Yuri Horlis. The Breadbasket of the Reich, Shroud of General Planost. We have Lands of Contrast, as well as Black Market Trading. Cool. Review the Wehrmacht. Followed with Deutschland über alles. Spada's command of the OKW is not driven by a lust for personal glory and the consolidation of power, but a desire to strengthen the Wehrmacht as a powerful apolitical force within the Reich. Such a force, he claims, will ensure the preservation of the nation and the safety of its people. Deutschland über alles. We shall have an absolute total war against the degenerates of the Republic of Ukraine. Let's just go ahead and... Ooh, seven. That's not bad, actually. If we can get three, that'd be great. Ooh, we have a... Th ooh, one, two, three. Sixty-six percent chance to do correct here. Ooh, ooh guns in Romania. Mm. I kind of want to wait and see what happens. We have a little bit of time. We can wait maybe a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Klaus Stauffenberg. Von Stauffenberg. Kind of wins Indonesian Civil War. We don't care. Sell, sell, sell. And which I'll go through you guys over here. And you guys do that. Farben offline stock. Economists speculate. This morning, Deutsche Bank was reported as opening vast swaths of IG Farben stock to public sale through the Frankfurt Stock Exchange thus far. The value of a single share has dropped 10 Reichsmarks and continues to fall, though the rate has decreased due to the number of new shareholders buying up the newly released shares. Neither IG Farben nor Deutsche Bank itself has commented on the sudden offloading of stock, though De Zeitz reporters have pressed them for their reasoning. Attempts to reach Farben's senior board members have failed unanimously, though a link is speculated to exist between him and Josef Abs, a major influence in the policies of both organizations and one of Farben's largest shareholders. Though, who knows how long the situation will last. Updates will continue. For once, the papers might be on to something. Hmm. I want to wait for that. Let's do that again. Um, friendly rebel forces. 86% is pretty good. Fun the Cabal. Yes, please. Good. And let's go and do this too. Alright, so now... Oh, look at that. Reformers are at 55%. Conservatives are okay. Militarists gotta go. And we're gonna continue with this. Reichswerke? Loyalty of the Reformists. They're supportive. Good. Very good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's actually really kind of reassuring now. And the reformists, maybe we can get the reformists. They are 47% of total power. Moldura secures Britain leadership. Review the Wehrmacht. It's good. Oh, a free Ukraine. Oh, the military's get more loyalty? No, thank you. Uh, well, we've got Deutschland über alles, and then we will do this. Offer the olive branch. Send in the Wehrmacht. Securing control. I really want to do that one. A formally end Germanization. Ooh! Ooh, oh no, I don't want to do that one. Mm, no, I, as much as I want more reformer support. Ooh, split gauntlet. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I mean, there's there's some reforms we got to do, but some reforms we just can't. I'm sorry. There's just some things we just got to do. Uh, for Ukraine, though. At a glance, Cox's administration seemed to be doing fantastic work for the Reich. Germanization had proceeded smoothly. Partisan activity was extremely low, and the natives were, quick, were put to work for the betterment of the Reich. However, looks can be deceiving. As apparent by the current situation, Koch was incapable of keeping the Ukraine from liberating itself from her hands. Its heavy-handed government fostered more than just mere hate, and the natives' knives were sharp when they struck in our moment of weakness. Ukraine was too important to let drift away from us. We need to decide how to proceed from here to reintegrate the region back into the pact. Time for a reset? The A turned off the radio after the speech was over. He asked, So what do you think, sir? The ambassador thought for a moment, for a while, a long while, as he collected his thoughts. It sounds like the Prime Minister Malding wants to play nice with us. That speech was all about turning over a new leaf, how there's potential with England, trading with Germany again, and how he wants relations to be restored. All that. He thought he'd be a bit more angry with us, mused the aide. Why should he be? They have Cornwall. They don't have any reason to be angry with us anymore. And their offer is designed to keep the Wehrmacht off our heels, or their heels. We could still go after them, don't you think? We, they aren't ready, after all, and what they did was tantamount to war between us and them. The ambassador shook his head. I don't think that's going to happen. Germany wants a way out of this, and it's the best we can get at the moment. I'll relay those thoughts to the Reichs Minister. Sometimes we have to take a step back. Oh, look at this. One to three. Three, three. Ah, one, two, three. That's a 66%... Ch Actually, there's a 33% chance we'll do okay. Uh, we'll do perfectly, 66% chance that we'll do not okay. So, 33% chance versus a 33% chance... Uh, whatever we choose, it's going to suck for us. So, uh, just get guns into Romania. We're probably not going to win this one. But, you know, I've been wrong before. So, we'll see. We shall most definitely see. Soon. Not yet, though. Alright, so we're still putting out loads and loads of civilian factories. Totally fine with us. Because this will help us drive down that annual deficit. 
What's the next research going to be done? Not yet soon. Come on. Oh, we tied. We tied. Okay, so we tied. We didn't lose. So that's okay. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Explain what I'm looking at, Herman. Hi, Joe Herman. Just at the two financial reports sitting on the desk. To your left, you have the report submitted by Alexis von Roen. To the right is my own, admittedly somewhat speculative, report on the same. All of us here are numbers. Say what you mean and be quick about it. Bowman had no patience for this kind of theater. Herman Fraun, consider this section here then on uniform expenditure. Von Rona's report claims that this year we spent double what we spent last year on uniforms for the troops garrison at Nelson. Why? There have been no major operations here, no significant movement of new troops in the region, no local recruitment campaigns. All that, Chief of the Party Chancellor Baldur von Schirach chimed in. Uniforms wear out, Herman. We cannot have our troops wandering around in tattered uniforms we ha that haven't seen in Neil since the West Russian War. Herman's nostrils flared. Expenditures which have already been accounted for, my fear. Something is off here. I believe the OKW's true expenditures are being concealed from us by von Rona and his reformist friends, he scowled. I have no time for your petty squabbles. I do loathe financial mismanagement. Investigate this further. Oh, oh no. Are the reformists digging things deep? Could this bite me in the butt later on if we don't figure this out? Uh, we gotta go. We gotta go with more of this. We gotta go. We gotta go deeper. Supportive. Good. Very supportive. I like it. I like it. The hair is very supportive as well. Uh, opposition. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Gotta get the militarists with loyalty first. Lower that, and then we'll go with more reformists. That'd be good. And maybe actually we'll do some other stuff too, so. We must have a free Ukraine? Yes. A free Ukraine, whether it's under our administration or not. I, I just, I can't go with all the, all for the olive branch. I just don't think I can personally do that. Okay, so 10-10, that's good. Anything else around here? Um, Not really, no. Not yet, at least. The German offer. Formally end Germanization. That seems completely antithesis. An, an antithesis to what we want. Oh, what is this? Shell oh, let's remove Shellshock soldiers. So, I've achieved a consensus with regard to the Wehrmacht's alignment seemingly secure the gross Germanisches Reich as a stable future. With the public pleased and the government united, there is nothing standing between the Reich and the glories of the future. Fear of Bauman's achievement of consensus has seemingly reinforced his political omnipotence over the state, and many accuse the fear of acting in self-interest rather than with the selfishness of a man due to his position. Quite frankly, these people are character assassins and do not understand that the interests of the state are the interests of the fear. For the insolence, we shall sweep them aside, and as we dismiss them from the halls of power, we shall brand them the very name of the childish generation. Very very well. Sox County Cutods. Telling tales. Oh boy. Oh, look at that. We actually won. They went. They gambled. Why did they why did they go higher? They went from 10 to 11? Nice. Cover up Cabal Secrets. Good. Telling tales. Alexis von Rona stood now on the same spot as accuser. Heijo Herman had stood, hands clasped behind his back. Indeed, expenditure on uniforms this year has been higher than usual. Some fool in Riga forgot to apply mothballs to the uniforms in storage, warranting an almost a complete replacement of the stockpile. I thought it beneath the fear's notice, hence why the reasoning was not included in my report. A glint appeared in von Rona's eyes. In fact, I am surprised Herman thought to bring it up with you at all. I expected the information to work its very way up through one of his meetings with Field Marshal Shona. Shona? What does he have to do with this? Bowman's brow Road in confusion. He and Herman have been meeting with somewhat regularly. You were not aware, my fear? Bowman's feared brow reached his mouth as a scowl. I was not. Get Herman over here. I hear this from him personally. Something is up. Owning oh, no, Pulitzer's eye. Just another attempt to get this comrade in trouble. Get out. Something is up. Especially, I mean, with Shona. We want the spider, so Shona is probably real pissed off right now. Alright, so right now, if we empower the militarists, actually, they have almost no power, so. I don't mind empowering them a little bit more, so I, I, I have to take out the Ukraine. I have to. I Just physically, I have to do it. I love the Ukraine so much, I have to take them out. Following up, all-knowing pull aside. Militia Abshadins. To the fear, top secret information regarding the activities of Hajjo Haman. Involvements within the OKW station also have been confirmed meetings between Brigade, Brigade General Hajjo Herman and Field Marshal Shona not required under... Normal practice, these meetings were not recorded and do not concern official activities within Oslin. Further observation has also confirmed contact with General Fedor von Bach, who by all rights should have no legitimate business in Oslin due to his responsibilities in Muscovine. Von Bach is an outspoken advocate for Wehrmacht expansion and is known to have contact with large slave plantations in the east. Further investigation is warranted. Bring me Shona and he can account for this. Oh boy. Oh, here we go. So four and two. We actually won. So we need to win one more time. Hopefully we can. We're going to go large. Large and in charge, just the way Daddy Borman likes it. Our board, balding, glorious daddy. Uh, I've got to go with Sin in the Wehrmacht. I, I just, I'm sorry. I, 
As long as Ukraine remains an independent nation, they remain a threat to the Reich and explode flank in our side. The only way for Germany to remain secure and self-dependent is to march back into Ukraine and secure it. We cannot tolerate anyone controlling the breadbasket of Europe, and the Black Sea ports are too important to not have in our direct control. We have no choice. The Hale will march at once and re-establish Reich's commissariat. We will put down the upstarts by force. We gotta... I mean, if we don't Germanize the area, what's the point of doing the whole Nazism stuff? Okay, we got ten! Well, bad words. We got up to a perfect score already. The only way they can beat us there is if they choose to, like, um, get 10 as well. So, there's nothing I can do. It's out of my hands, my friends. And actually, let's wait. We can't do this in a thousand, right? For a thousand years. The military faction has been dismantled. Okay. Okay, we can read this anyways. We have succeeded in surviving the aftermath of the Bugger Creek. The Gross Germanic Reich has achieved political, relative political stability for the first time in decades. As a result, a powerful wave of optimism has swept across the Reich. The German people, hopeful for a good future, believe this is the commencement of a new glorious era for National Socialism. A new golden age under fear of Martin Bormann is perhaps on the horizon, yet only time will tell. But given the recent events, it's safe to assume that the thousand-year Reich will remain ever more. Glorious. Alright, so we went that way. Um, reformists. We need more reformists here. You guys, let's get, let's, we're gonna go with reformists. Oh, you're actually leading this. Huh, okay, well, that's alright. I want reformists. Uh, I, actually, I don't like any opposition here. Let's go reformists all the way. Yeah. One, two, three, four, and then you got the stuff, two stuff down here. How's the world going, actually? Our GDP is not growing at all, it seems like. Which makes sense, of course. They've lost 62,000. The wheels of confusion, Reich's ministerful economy caught long, was holding up his hands in confusion, to be quite honest, my fear. It makes no sense. The Reich's Velka, IG Fab, and our natural enemies. They've been competing for influence in Ukraine since it arrived in our sphere. Yet today, Reich's Verka has begun offloading colossal amounts of material, selling factories, plantations, and slaves. They must know Fabin is going to snap it up, yet they keep doing it anyways. Most of what they're selling has, was even profitable. Then, they're withdrawing? Are they setting up operations in another area? No, they're just leaving. Lange threw up his hands, gesturing his feudal confusion. Suspicious. Order Carol to cease all sales and account for himself. There's some economic explanation. Uh, it's sus absolutely suspicious. We must know what's going on. Armed friendly rebels. Yes, even more strength of the Cabal. Yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. Like, awesome. A peace conference? Who's, who has a peace conference right now? We have one more interaction. Very good. Sehr gut. 100,000 Ukrainians have died again. I mean, how many more men do you want dead over here? For the love of God, how many more? 134,000. Full accounting. Rex Vecca, Bolden Director's member Hans Carroll, sat in the Führer's office enjoying a glass of wine with Bowman. Bowman, of course, didn't certainly feel like it was warranted, even given he was here to explain himself, but protocol demanded it. Indeed, we've been selling our assets in Ukraine, but it's all part of our overarching business strategy. If it is strategy, I can see no advantage to it. Fabin is buying up everything. Facilities have been shown to be deeply profitable. Carroll gave a sly smile, so it would seem, and I'm glad that your ministers were deceived. For it shows our strategy is soundness. Profitable they are, but what of what opportunity cost? With the money raised from selling our assets in Ukraine, a Reichsvecca can instead invest in areas across the Reich, the areas that, with the right nurturing, will become vastly more profitable. Fabin, on the other hand, will be stuck with a cut. Cast off in Ukraine while we race her head. Bowman wasn't quite sure. He had no head for economics, a field that made seem too close to the degenerate field of Jewish banking to interest a man as such. Still, it certainly sounded as though it made sense. You're a shrewd man, Carl, is only testing you. You can't trust these types. Arrest them until we can find out what's going on. It seems like the option where we hurt ourselves seems like what is best. I don't trust anybody. Nope. 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 I'll arrest him. If there's nothing wrong, then we will peacefully let him go. If there is corruption afoot, then we will find it. We will exterminate the corruption in the lands, like how we're exterminating the Ukrainian people right now. Uh, uh, over 158,000 dead. And for what? Theodor Oberlander, welcome back. Oh, look at that. Very good. Securing control. Once again, Germany is in direct control of Ukraine. Our work, however, is far from a finish. We, much needs to be done. The German settlers need immediate relief. Partisans are still scattered throughout the country and need to be terminated. Garrisons in the major cities need to be rebuilt and manned, and the ports need to be repaired and refurbished almost from the ground up. Most importantly, we need to secure the vital farming regions and ensure that the crops remain untouched, lest the partisans get in to them first. Our new ex-commissar. 
With Ukraine more or less secured and stabilized, it is time to officially reinstate the Reichs Commissariat Theodor Oberlander. One of the Bauman's closest allies shall be sent to ensure German interests come first and foremost. He will oversee the reconstruction and rehabilitation of the entire area and make sure that the Reich continues to receive its cereals while making sure that the natives work again work for the glory of the fatherland. Corruption and bribery. Holding Polizei Militärische Abschiedsdienst to the Führer top secret information report on the activities of the Reichswerke. Investigation into the finances of senior board members of the Reichswerke have determined evidence of financial tampering. Multiple financial transactions were noted between Hans Kerl and Reichswerke's director of operations, Edmund Geil Geilenberg. Nuremberg and the millions of Reichsmark, these transactions correspond to no known legitimate operation. Further investigation into Geilens Geilensberg's finances and Reichswerke's operations is recommended. Uh, good explanation. There must be more of this paper trail. Something concrete. Gallenberg. Uh, if we keep, like, hitting people that have ties to Shona, then they he'll he'll know something's up. Gallenberg. You know, or we just arrest him. Keep digging. There must be more of this paper trail. Eh, I'll do him anyways. Why not? We'll do him anyways. Ten and nine. The Eastern Bulwark. Though we had many choices and compromises, Muscovine was always a bulwark against the Asiatic steep. Now the bulwark doesn't seem so stable anymore. Action must be taken immediately. Very good. And oh, actually, what's going on here? Nine still. Okay. Land of Fog. A new Reich's Commissar. Karl Gallenberg, an anarchy in the east. With the internal problems solved and the Vaterland's immediate premises, uh, premises secure, we must now reclaim what was once Reich's Commissar at Muscovine. After Kashia fled Moscow, our largest and most populous colony fell apart. Revolts erupted across all major cities, and with the mainland gripped by the civil war, and the administration was unable to restore order. Now Muscovine is but a copy of the rest of Russia. Warlords and bandits roaming the land and trying to establish the petty kingdoms and personal domains. It falls upon us to reclaim our legacy. In the frozen lands of Russia, we defeat the Bolsheviks once, we'll do it as many times as necessary where we get more loyal support. God dang it. Colin Gallenberg. Edmund Gallenberg Gallenberg was evidently smarter than his possible pun on crime, Carol. He was out of Germany on business and not scheduled to return for a week. He had, however, made time in his busy schedule for a phone call of the Fuhrer. He was how generous. Indeed, I have sent a sum of money to Carol. His work in Ukraine is vital to our current business strategy, and the expenses associated with chartering jets across the Reich is, are exorbitant. And his story is true that Reichsvac is selling Ukrainian assets to reinvest the funds elsewhere in the Reich? Of course, though I must ask you to not share this information with anyone at IG Fob, and for them to find out at this stage would be catastrophic. How Bowman hated these businessmen. He could never tell when they were telling the truth because it seemed like to them the truth did not exist. Evidently, they learned something from the NSDAP after all. Call off the investigation. I'm fed up with finances. No, no, oh no, 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 no. Don't, don't end the investigation. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. German rule endures, which we probably want to do. Or mobilize a hair. All right, interesting. Approach Kaminsky. Ooh. Becomes puppet. Volgestadt. Begin the reconstruction. Muscovine. Temporary military control. Cool. But unfortunately, that is going to conclude today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving a like. We've won here in Romania. And uh, subscribe if you're new, like I said. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. When we shall take over, hopefully, the rest of Muscovine. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.